So what is it that's bothering you right now as you're sitting out there? What's that kind of burr in your saddle that you can't get out of your mind? Well, here's what it is for me. Most people with high eye pressure, they never get glaucoma. And 30% of patients with glaucoma never have a high eye pressure. In Asia, 70% of patients that have glaucoma never have a high eye pressure. And this normal tension glaucoma and severe glaucoma is really, really tough to treat. And so when you come to a surprise like this, I think it's good to zoom out and say, okay, we have some things we know are true, but what really is the truth? And look at things from a different perspective. So the common belief has always been that glaucoma is a one pressure disease, pressure in the eye, IOP. The more likely truth is that glaucoma is a balance between two pressures, a high eye pressure or a low intracranial pressure. And when you look at the optic nerve head where the disease occurs, this histologic image shows that there's two pressurized fluids compressing the optic nerve head. And we spend almost all of our time talking about eye pressure where the cerebral spinal fluid bays more of the optic nerve and it exposes it to more pressure. Now this is just basic physics, right? If you have two equal and opposite forces, those forces are gonna cancel each other out. But if you have a force on one side of the equation that's higher than the force on the other side of the equation, you get a net force that's generated, glaucomatous cupping can occur. So when I was a resident at Duke, uh, I had this idea while scuba diving, so I came back and I went to the Mayo Clinic and I looked at 50,000 lumbar punctures over a 20-year period, and here's what we found. We found that indeed patients that have glaucoma have a low CSF pressure. Patients that have ocular hypertension, high eye pressure, no glaucoma, they had a high protective CSF pressure. This has been cited over 300 times now experimentally in humans, other places, and we're pretty sure that this is true. In fact, when you look at this data curve that has 14,000 data points in it, you'll see that at age 65, intracranial pressure starts going down right when glaucoma incidence starts to go up. But so what? I was a fellow with Dick Lindstrom, and I go into his office, and I'm nervous, and I tell him this, and he says, so what are you going to do about it? And I said, what do you mean, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to get credit for it, and people are going to think I'm smart. And, and he said, well, I like to live in a world where our scientific discoveries actually help people, and maybe we even turn that into a company that has a sustainable way to treat disease. And so this is our solution, and it's different, and it's really simple. It's just a pair of goggles attached to a pump that draws a small vacuum that lowers the pressure on the eye and in turn lowers the pressure in the eye. Think about it like this. We're all here in Chicago at sea level with 760 millimeters of mercury of weight pressurizing us. We're pressurized human beings. It's pressurizing our eye, our blood, our CSF, our tissues. And all we do is simply draw a small vacuum over our eye, release some of the weight off of our eye, and we lower the eye pressure relative to all the other pressures in our body. So if you call atmospheric pressure ambient zero and you say glaucoma pressure's high at 22 and your intracranial pressure's low at nine, If you put on a pair of goggles and draw a small vacuum of only 10 millimeters of mercury, you can take that 22 to say 12 and normalize the pressure difference across the optic nerve head. So we're presenting our data for the very first time right now and we're really, really excited about it. This is 51 patients in a consistent cohort that were randomized to one eye receiving vacuum and one eye not receiving vacuum. Pay attention that they had a pretreatment pressure of 16 millimeters of mercury. It's really hard to lower a pressure of 16 even lower. So we dial in a 25% reduction and we take that 16 in the treatment eye to 13.11. We dial in a 50% reduction and we take it to 11.4. We dial in a 75% reduction and we take it below 10 millimeters of mercury. Once the goggles come off, they go back to a little bit below the baseline that they were standing at. Now, how do we envision people using this? We envision that most people would use this at night. And we know that we're vulnerable at night. We know eye pressure goes up at night. We know that the current therapies don't lower eye pressure well at night. And we know blood pressure goes down at night. And so we believe that we can really decrease the area under the curve, decrease the IOP burden on these patients. I'd be remiss to not 
uh, mention my management team. We've got an unbelievable board of directors. We've got a scientific advisory board that's the Illuminati of glaucoma. And most importantly, we've got Matt Larson, Gary Berman, and Paul Yu have dedicated their professional existence to pursuing this idea, and I'm really, really grateful for that. So why do we think that we're a meaningful solution in the landscape? We think that there's a real unmet need for normal tension and severe glaucoma. We can totally control I patient's IOP, we think. We think that we'll have an unbeatable safety profile. We can monitor the data and the use and the progression over time. And importantly, from a business standpoint, we've got a recurring revenue model. So these are the four things that I hope you remember. Number one, the laws of physics, they apply universally to all of us. Glaucoma patients are vulnerable at night. We can dial in eye pressure exactly to where we want it to be without surgery or drops. And we're hopeful that we can be the safest way to treat the toughest glaucomas. Thank you.